Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Receiver. This is a game that got a lot of buzz, I think, uh, last year, back in 2012. Uh, it's made by the guys at Wolfire Games and it was made originally for like a 48 hour Ludum Dare type uh, game jam that only had to do with making FPS's. So this is an FPS, but it's one of the most interesting FPS's uh, mechanically that I think I've probably ever played. Now this did just come out on Steam, it was previously available through their website if you pre-ordered Overgrowth, I think. Uh, but now it is available on Steam standalone for 4 bucks. Now, the, the price tag indicates uh, what you might expect, that this is a very simple game, but in spite of that, it's got a, enough of a quirk on it, just at a, the most basic level, uh, to make it incredibly interesting. It also has a banging Deus Ex style like sci-fi track, but in any case, let's talk about the mechanics, because the, the main premise of this game is that uh, the gun physics and mechanics are hyper-realistic, so... I'm just bringing up the health menu here, or sorry, the help menu here, uh, and we're gonna go through all of the possible, like, individual uh, elements that we can manipulate with respect to this gun. So I just use the E key, uh, and that's gonna open up my uh, cylinder here on my revolver. Then I can use the Z key to uh, insert some casings, then I can close it, and uh, now we should be good to go. Now, every time you start the game, you start with a different gun, and you start with the gun in a different state. So sometimes you'll start with it with zero ammo, sometimes you'll start with a whole bunch of ammo, but only half of it's loaded into the magazine, etc, etc. Uh, but this help menu does a very good job of taking a game that could otherwise be easily seen as incomprehensible, uh, and, and turning it into something that's workable, even after only like half an hour of play for me. Uh, so, the actual premise of the game from a, a gameplay standpoint, is that we have to uh, collect as many of these tapes as we can. As you can see, there's 11 tapes in the top right. Uh, we've collected zero. And we're in some kind of like futuristic sci-fi world, like a Blade Runner, or again, like a Deus Ex. Uh, and all of these uh, security systems are trying to kill us. So I've only really come across two security systems so far. I haven't done very well in my time with this game so far. The, the most tapes I've gotten, I believe, was... Um I think I got two tapes on one of my runs, which was a landmark for me. Usually I get zero. This is very much a game where I die a lot. And the levels are, uh, and enemy placements are randomized as well, as far as I know. So, uh, you know, it has that going forward in kind of a pseudo-roguelike sense. And I, I really, I can't stress enough that despite the seemingly obtuse mechanics, even if you know nothing about guns whatsoever, as I do, uh, like I know nothing about guns, just to clarify there, uh, you can work with this game very easily simply because they've done a very good job with the help menu uh, and whatever you need to do in order to get your gun working is essentially highlighted on the right side. I mean, there is still a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not the same kind of learning curve associated with like a MOBA or Dwarf Fortress or anything like that. Uh, it's mostly just about learning the controls. So we're just going to examine this house here. I believe the tape placement is also randomized, so in a way it's almost also kind of like, uh, like Slender, I suppose. And, oh, there's a turret here in that we are looking for, um, oh, don't shoot me, we are very fragile as well. Uh, but it's kind of like Slender in the sense that, you know, you're, you're looking for some environmental objects that, oh, fuck that up, how many times have I shot? I think I've only shot two plus three, so we should have one more shot left in this revolver. It's got kind of like a red orchestra feel in that sense, alright, I totally missed that. So now we have to open up our cylinder, uh, and by holding V we will extract the casings here. Uh, we have one more to come out. I don't know if that's meant to be uh, realistic, like sometimes the bullets get jammed when you try to get rid of the casings from the cylinder. Anyway, we're, we've reloaded here and we're going to take another crack at it. I can't believe that thing took so many fucking shots to kill. That's real bad. Now, there's probably nothing for us here. So you could also probably just try to sneak by that guy and then check out what we've got going on in here, which appears to be basically nothing. Uh, but at the same time, you know, why am I playing this game if not to use the guns? Like, they, the gun mechanic is basically the reason this game costs $4. Uh, or the, the reason this game is worth $4, I should even say. Uh, because it, it's just so unique and so unlike uh, anything I've ever played. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, with the wealth of games out there uh, in human history that maybe there is a, uh, a game similar to this. Hey, I think we found a tape, actually, in which case we will be... Uh, able to hear some of the voice acting that comes throughout the game. We've also gotten a flashlight there, which we can use with us. If you are listening to this tape, it means you have survived the mind kill. Previous attempts to listen to this tape would have found it blank, but now it contains immediate instructions of your difficult path forward. So I'm not going to let the guy talk too much. I'm going to talk over him a little bit, but uh, in getting these tapes... Uh, I think you have to actually listen to them the whole way before it counts as a tape being absorbed. Holy shit, we're actually setting like so a new record here, basically. Uh, but basically there is a sci-fi type story. No, no, no! Ah, oh, he got me! One shock actually kills us there. But there is seeming like, like a Johnny Mnemonic or, you know, again, the Matrix kind of type, uh, 
sci-fi like story which is is interesting but also you know I, oh I just spawned two seconds ago I don't think the voice acting is supreme, superbly well done but you know at the same time this was something that was whipped together relatively quickly and again it is all about the mechanics so uh, sadly I died there I, I didn't want to because you know not only is that unpleasant but at the same time uh, it also meant that uh, I, I'm using the same gun here now there are more than two guns in the game uh, do we have just bullets here uh, there are more than two guns in the game, but at the same time, I really wanted to use that uh, pistol that we had before. Because every gun has different mechanics, you know, obviously with uh, this one, we could be ultimate ballers and just spin the uh, the rifle barrel, or sorry, the rifle barrel, spin the uh, revolver barrel here. Um, but, you know, there's like automatic pistols that we can switch on to full auto mode, and then, you know, it, it, basically just every gun has its own kind of unique quirks and, and foibles, uh, for better or worse, that make it easier or more difficult to shoot with. Uh, but every one requires a little bit of learning on your own. So I'm going to try to make my way through here. I'm really impressed that we got as many tapes as we did on the last one. Uh, and I, I have to stress again, I, I hope I didn't be a total dongus and turn the music way too far down as I oftentimes do. Because I really think, even though there's only one track in this game, this game, it, it, it lends itself so well to the atmosphere, it makes it genuinely scary. Like, I'm, I'm tense Your all the time when I'm playing this on. game. The rules of our world don't apply to yours, and so the threat have made a careful study of listening to your thoughts. The kill drones are the result of this research. All right, so these robots, I guess, are called the kill drones. I'm a little scared by the fact that I have no uh, flashlight right now. First few times I started the game, I started with a flashlight, so I've kind of grown dependent on it. But instead, I think I'm actually going to have to run outside uh, so I can actually see something. Now, the, the real question is, you know, in, in a let's look at, there's a... Uh, you know, a two focuses. One is on uh, just demonstrating what happens uh, with the game, you know, what the general premise of the game is. And the other one is, um, you know, is, is the game worth buying. And $4, this is one of the cases I feel where the price absolutely matches the, the game. Because this is not a deep game. Oh, by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, there's another Killtron there. We got a Donkey Kong Killtron coming up if you're interested. I've got three shots. No, 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 the taser's gonna get me! Oh, the, the fear, <laughs> the anxiety is really heightened by being like unable to reload just by hitting the R key. So you're like frantically just being like, God, what the hell do I have to do? Okay, so we have the revolver again, but we do start with the flashlight this time. In a way, you know, the game's kind of got, you know, I'm not gonna say roguelike elements necessarily, but uh, let me just get the cylinder closed again here. But you do start with, with different uh, abilities every single time or different, you know, tools every single time. But, uh, yeah, as I was saying before, I do think the price absolutely matches the uh, experience that you get here. Because this is a very simple game. I think I'm going to get shocked again, like, instantly. Get away from me, Killatron. Oh, I think I... God damn it. Sometimes they die in one hit, sometimes they take more. I'm really bad at this game. But I think the price matches the experience so well, because this is not a uh, deep game by any stretch of the imagination. But it's also not expensive at all. I mean, this is available for four bucks right now in its opening week sale on Steam. Uh, and I think that's exactly the right price for a game that is basically entirely, it, it's fun level, it hinges entirely on uh, the fact that it's mechanically very different from other games. It's fun, don't get me wrong, uh, but you know, if it got into that $10 price range, I think people would start to be like, wait a minute, why am I paying $10 for this when it's not really that polished or, uh, you know, deep of an experience? Not to, oh, whoops, accidentally clicked the mouse button there. Uh, not to continue to harp on the depth of the game, because uh, that it doesn't really matter. The game is a little shallow, but at the same time, it, it, it has that same kind of characteristic like Slender, like the replayability and uh, kind of anxiety. I, I can't stress this enough. For real, this game makes me extraordinarily anxious when I play it. I hope we get another gun soon. I think I fired four bullets so far, so I have two left. Okay. Uh, the game is really scary, and, <laughs> you know, $5, again, to stress this, I think is the right price. I think I killed it. Oh, excellent, okay. Again, sometimes you just, I don't think you get a critical hit, I think it's just you hit it at the right point, and that allows you to get, um, uh, was this where you started? No, you, you hit it in the right spot, and that allows you to basically one-shot it, as opposed to normally when you hit it, and, uh, you know, it just kind of bounces back. After a minute like this, okay, now we definitely have to open our cylinder, extract the casings. And in a way, I really like that you're dealing with, um, like, AI enemies, so it seems kind of realistic that they stop pursuing you and just, like, go back to their standard programming. As opposed to, um, you know, real enemies which would pursue you and actually make the game exceptionally difficult. Not only because I, I assume, uh... You know, that would have been much harder to program in 48 hours because, you know, human-like AI is probably a little bit more difficult than uh, just a turret that spins around. But at the same time, 
Oh, we got another tape here. Uh, at the same time... Oh, I don't need another flashlight. Wouldn't it be sweet if I could just dual wield flashlights? But, uh... Uh, at the same time, it also makes it interesting because, uh, or, I don't know, makes it so we don't die. Because otherwise it would be basically impossible to, uh, reload your weapon while someone is chasing you down at a full sprint. There is a little bit of slowdown. This is not just fraps. Occasionally. Oh, come on. There we go. Occasionally, um, I think I shot four times there. Occasionally, uh, when you enter, like, a new room, the game will slow down a little bit for reasons unbeknownst to me. But it is not just a, um... Oh, I hear it. It is not just a, a Fraps recording issue. Okay, that's... Oh, come on! What did we die of blood loss there or something? Well, to be honest with you, we've probably shown that all we need to show with uh, with respect to receiver. I like that you respawn really quickly afterwards, too. But actually, this is perfect. We'll do one more run, and we'll do it with this different gun so you don't just see the revolver all the time. So this one, um, we can release the magazine, I, I think. If we eject the magazine, I can see if there's any bullets in here. Uh, we just, Usually with this pistol, you start off with uh, more than one magazine, because you go through the bullets pretty quickly, or at least I do, because I'm bad at it. Uh, but, oh, I think there's more bullets down here. Yeah, okay, so we have six bullets. So actually, I think, here's what I can do. I can, uh, this is entirely based on my own intuition at this point. You kind of almost learn how the gun works after you play with it for a while, which I guess is, you know, learning. So I think you eject magazine, holster weapon, and then insert bullets with Zed. Actually, that worked out perfectly fine. All right, and then we're gonna draw our weapon back, and then reinsert the magazine with Zed, pull back the slide. Oh, I think I might have give, gotten rid of a, a totally okay bullet there, but now we are good to go. So we could, uh, if we wanted to, put this on full automatic, but let's not get too crazy, uh, because we don't have a whole lot of bullets. You know, graphically the game's pretty simplistic, but from an aesthetic standpoint, I do think it, it succeeds very well with the music and sound, creating a, an eerie atmosphere. And it, it's a good setting for a first-person shooter, I mean, it's been done to death, basically, from like the early 2000s, but uh, at the same time, what can I say? I have a soft spot for it. It works for me. So this this guy definitely saw me. Oh, and uh, yep, I'm going to pass out again. God damn it, I am bad at this game. Hopefully we get another uh, gun this time and not the revolver. That Okay, good, it's the same one. So now we start with multiple magazines, and again, uh, I'm just going to uh, eject the magazine. Let's try to do this one without the help without the help menu. Uh, and then we'll insert as many bullets as we can to get a full magazine. Then we'll take this out and reinsert the magazine, which is... Uh, okay, I need help for a second. Zed, okay. Awesome. And pull back the slide. Which, again, did not eject the casing this time, which I think is a good thing. And without the help menu, this is where we enter uh, pro mode. If I can kill, like, a single enemy, I'll be pretty pleased with myself. We can see with from the blue light here that there is definitely... Uh, an asshole around the corner. Uh, we might have to use stealth to get by this guy. Okay, let's just play it cool. Oh, I, I definitely... I hit it like four times there. Okay, I hit it five times there, actually. I thought I, thought I saw some bullets on the ground over here, though. These might just be casings. The other reason why it's good to have the help menu up is because... Uh, when you do have the help menu up... By the way, we can put our flashlight away because that gets real annoying sometimes. But, um... The way you, uh, when you have, uh, the help menu up, G will glow when there's items to be picked up on the ground, which is, uh, really useful. Wow, one shot, one kill there. Uh, yeah, G will glow when there's enemies, or when there's items on the ground, which makes it much easier to kind of see. Almost in like a torchlight style where the items can get, or the loot can get highlighted. Uh, it's not exactly like that, but it's a little bit akin to that if I had to say. So we got lucky we didn't get murdered there. Let's try this again. I, I'm wasting a little bit of ammo here, but at the same time, better safe than sorry. And I do have a decent number of bullets as well. Believe it or not- oh, shit. Believe it or not, I'm actually playing substantially better uh, over the course of this video than I did- again, there's a little bit of that characteristic slowdown, but um, I'm playing a little bit better over the course of this video than I played when I did this uh, off-camera by myself. I can't believe I'm still alive here. I don't know how much ammo is left in this thing. Uh, so, let's just try to shoot this guy from afar. I don't know if we hit him there. So now we're out of ammo. We can eject the magazine with E. Put it back in our inventory with... Oh, oh god. Take out our new magazine with three. And then reinsert it and pull back the slide. All right. See, I'm starting to be able to reload just from muscle memory, which is really... Uh, it, it's a rewarding feeling to get to that point. There are a lot of cameras down here. This worries me, but also intrigues me. Oh, come on. One of them's on to me. 
Oh, it was this guy. I thought it was the other one. God damn it. But in any case, this is Receiver from uh, Wolfire Games. I hope this did a decent job of piquing your curiosity at the very least. Because, yeah, for its opening week sale, this is available uh, for $4. It will be $5 normally once that opening week sale ends. It's super interesting. This is not a game I think that you are necessarily going to spend 100 hours with, like, you know, a $5 purchase like Isaac. Uh, but it's a game that is very, very interesting, and I, I promise you that you have almost certainly never played a first-person shooter like it. Uh, it. It is basically a game that you're buying because it's exceptionally interesting. I think I've got this on full auto by accident, or maybe burst fire. Uh, but yeah, let's just let this uh, shocker kill me. Don't do ah, I tried. But yeah, super interesting, yeah. You can uh, find a link to the uh, receiver store page on Steam in the video description if you're interested. I recommend this if you have uh, cash to burn because this is a, a very interesting idea. Okay, come on, that's not really fair. I just started here. Pacifist run of receiver. Those probably exist on YouTube. I'm sure there's lots of like MLG level gameplay in receiver. I would love to see this uh, integrated as kind of a multiplayer first person shooter as well. I don't know how it would work. I'm sure like the, it would be like Dota where if your skill level is like 2% below the person you're playing against and you just get your ass kicked 90% of the time. But in any case, again, I'm, I'm rambling here at the end of the video as I often do. Link to the receiver store page in the uh, video description below. As always, thanks for you guys for watching and I will see you next time.